Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of HVAC R&D, and thank you for joining us again. Um, in our last podcast, we covered another another part of our training session discussion. Uh, thanks to our, our guest, Zach, for all of his input and a lot of different things we were able to discuss. But today we wanted to dive into HVAC in the pandemic because... Mm-hmm. You know, we thought maybe we should talk about what this has been like on the trade side. I know everybody's had crazy things, you know, in their own life at home, but it's also been very interesting having to adapt to a whole new business landscape on our end in order to still provide services to our contractors who still had to provide services to homeowners. So as we start thinking about that in a few minutes, we'll let uh, Dennis's sweet intro music get us in the mood. All right, here we go. Thank you, Corey, playing us in there. <clears throat> Corey on the drums. I had a little acoustic work going there. And I have to throw a little... We got to throw some links up in the description there. Go, go check Corey out on YouTube. Uh, that's my son. He's got a little channel going. Pretty good little drummer. But tonight we are going to talk about HVAC and the pandemic. Um... As y'all have heard before, you know, riding, he's in the, he's in the outside sales, so he's going around. Of course, everybody's, uh, I didn't really notice a slowing down. I don't know if you did. I mean, the weather, it was, of course, we, we can get into why we slowed down possibly, but, um, first, first quarter is always an interesting quarter. Um, but we kind of, we didn't really have a whole lot of weather. We had a very, very mild winter in the Carolinas, so things were kind of kind of slow out of the gate anyway um in a lot of cases you know you always have one or two customers that are just either crazy busy and then you've got the one or two that are dead as a doornail and both of them are always complaining that they either have too much or not enough to do um (laughs) and then you know of course you've always got the guys in the middle and then all the while you're just kind of trying to do everything you can to make sure all your guys are happy and taken care of um and we had you know, we had some some things that were going coming up for us first quarter. I know we had our our annual dealer trip that we had to be prepared for, so that kind of brought in some other some other questions as to what was going to happen as we started to see you know events unfold and right. different things in the news. So it was it, you know it was really interesting, and I know you know really for you you know first quarter for you is starting to plan on what you're going to do training wise. Oh yeah. I had a ton of training plan. We had everything laid out. I've got a, um, I got one, I think I got one TXV class in a little two hour class and then shut down. Yeah. And that was in Charlotte. We only had what, maybe eight or nine people in it. It was really small. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, course it was kind of weird i mean it it, i don't know i was you know i was doing a lot of job sites before that and then all of a sudden we got guys that are essential workers out there right hvac is i was listening to a podcast the other day said um what does essential mean it means you're disposable (laughs) yeah i don't know if our i don't know if our trade's quite to that point but um in the south you know if you ain't got no AC, it's not good. No. No. Freaking out. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, guys calling and can you come out and look at this job? And I just couldn't really do it. So then it, then you start getting to, 
you know, they get upset. Um, can you FaceTime? Then everybody starts trying to come out with these different tools. Can we, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? But um, I did like the traffic. The traffic was nice when it first hit there. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, the traffic the traffic was nice, but <laughs> I think it, it was it was really weird because you know, nothing really slowed down at first, but you start seeing seeing reports of different things happening and then you gradually start seeing, you know, more and more people are, are worried about it. Um you know, we had we had group you know, several groups of customers that that, that pulled out of the trip. And our trip, yeah. we were supposed to leave. We left, you know, the first week of March, and we we went on. I forgot a, about that. The yeah, dealer yeah, meeting, yeah, that yeah. was a so the dealer meeting was a cruise. We left uh, March third, and we were coming back. We left out of Miami and we're coming back into Miami. And when we got in the morning of I think the ninth, you know, they were shutting the port down as we came in. The whole time we were worried we were going to have to be quarantined on the boat for a month. <laughs> that would have went over real well with half the company on a boat out in the middle of the ocean just doing yep. circles so it was it was i it love was when y'all strolled back in the branch when y'all got back everybody just kind of took off running yep <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh yeah here comes the covid here comes the covid guys exactly like no we did not bring it back from mexico with us thank you i mean little things like on the distributor side little things like closing the door putting a phone number up i mean you know guys are i mean we're their first stop you know they come in they get their popcorn they get their coffee um use the restaurant you know yeah. it's just it's yeah. I mean, hang out and you know watch start the, their day yeah start the day watch a little bit of the news as the day starting you know while things are getting loaded up and you know, all of a sudden, you know, it, it was just, it, it was just crazy. Stops. Yeah, it just, yeah. It, everything just stopped. I mean, it went from, you know, showrooms are busy to you could just hear a pin drop half the time. Um, and it just, you know. Now, I will, I will tell you this, like the, the, the being able to text. So I didn't get to do this. I mean, I probably could with a certain distributor, but I, I, I didn't get to do this when I was in the field. But texting texting them all my order and then they sitting out on the dock and i would have crushed that yeah and i think especially as a I, service guy just getting a motor a couple things and i think a lot of those those things uh, you know you know being Sometimes crossed over doing, from, right yeah I mean, yeah we'll still do it and things crossing over from you know call ahead ordering the way you would see it for you know walmart or Publix or somewhere where you you would go and shop and they bring it out to you or they set it out for you. Um, right. that, that totally kind of changed. It changed the way we did business. Um, but you know, what was even worse is, you know, it really had to change how it changed how the sales side, you know, interacted with customers. You know, typically for me, I was going to say, take us through your uh, <laughs> normal day pre COVID. Yeah. So normal day, Normal day pre-COVID, um, messages are hitting the phone between 6.30 and 6.45. You know, I'm trying to, you know, get ready for work and drink a cup of coffee or snack on something before I go in, because I'm not a big breakfast person, but, you know, snack on something before I go in, but it's already, you know, it's already hitting. I'm trying to get the first deliveries and everything, you know, lined up to be sure that those guys don't have to add anything to it before the trucks leave. Right, And then in most cases, I'm going to, you know, a first of two or three meetings for the day that in between those meetings, you know, I might have a lunch here or I've got a phone call that I've got to make with a, a vendor rep to work on something for another job to make sure some quotes are being put together. Um, you know, it went from all that being done, you know, in the car or, you know, I'd pull up somewhere to get a hotspot so I can get on my computer for a few minutes and I'm back on the road or I'm back on the phone. Right. You know, all that stopped. Um, yeah, I mean, when and it I went stopped, from it stopped. You know, I went from, you know, you're putting a couple hundred miles on a vehicle a week or more, easy, to I was parked behind a desk and couldn't leave. Right, and and being oh, yeah. used calling, to yeah. calling a customer on the phone, 
you know, even if it's a steady customer, calling him and saying, hey, how's it going? You need anything? It's different. Yeah, and, and you can only you can only do it so many times. I mean, right. you kind of, you start, in some ways, you almost start running out of what you want to do or you get even less productive because you're just, you're so anxious to sit in there not knowing what to do, not knowing who to talk to. You know, the whole time <laughs> your, your boss is asking you how you're going to grow and replace some business that you lost last year and how you're going to grow to do better with the business you had the year before that, that stayed. It's, you know, what do you want me to do? I mean, I can, I can right. call this guy 15 times in a day or I can call him once every three or four days. You know? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can't take him donuts or biscuits. No, you can't, you can't do anything. <laughs> um, you send an email. You know, that's just as likely to get answered as a phone call if they're not wanting yeah. to do it at the time. And then, you know, let alone trying to grow new business, people that don't have a clue who you are because you've never really even seen them face to face or introduced yourself. You know, it's 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 a whole different ballgame. It was it was a really weird adjustment trying to figure out you know how to effectively communicate, you know, without any real you know, physical or in not even necessarily physical, but any, you know, social scene or gathering right. of people. Well, I noticed too, cause I, you know, I'm covering five branches, five, five parts of North Carolina and they're all within, you know, hour, two hours, three hours. They're not far away, but man, what difference mm -hmm. the towns are during the pandemic, you know, um, you know, further up north, North Carolina. I mean, you got a guy calling me, want me to make a job site. Like, as far as he's concerned, there's nothing really going on. Yep. Then you got a guy, you know, in, in, in the city, like, hey, I mean, you know, I told him, I, said, I can't come out there. And he's like, yeah, I mean, homeowner doesn't want me to come in her house. And I don't know how we're supposed to do this. And, I mean, it just turns into a. But yeah, I mean that's what's hard is different parts of just the state, how they kind of reacted to it. But the training, I know I touched on this a little bit on the other episode about, um, you know, even the factories, even the factory guy saying, you know, because he's required to do some training too. Um, everybody's boss going to him. All right, so how are we going to do training now? We still got to do training. So, of course, I should have bought bought stock in zoom uh, <laughs> shouldn't we all <laughs> but uh yeah so you know i don't i just you know the zoom the zoom meetings are great for uh somebody who's already sitting behind a computer yep but uh the guys i mean i've never watched a zoom meeting on my phone i don't know i guess it I guess you could but, you can, uh, but it's it's kind of a pain. Uh, I know I would every now and then when we would do. I mean, you could listen, I guess. Yeah, you can listen, but you know, every now and then we would do like quarterly focus product conference calls yeah. and things like that. I would, you know, if I was if I was out on a sales call and it's two or three in the afternoon, I'd just pull somewhere and park and I'd put it up on my phone. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, it was something you're I kind of knew about. I'm just driving, <laughs> but you can't you can't stay focused on something like that. There's no, no. way. This 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 industry is too hands on and too technical to be, you know. I mean, I listen to HVAC podcast all the time just to get constantly try to pick up stuff other people are doing or learning. And you know, you listen to a thirty minute podcast, you get you might get a couple things out of it if it's technical, if it's full blown technical. Um, same with a class i guess but yeah um yeah i mean it's i'm not a fan now I, you know my idea was to come up with a youtube channel and put four to five minute videos on there because everything i do is i try to base it on when i was in the field what would i wanted what what kind of training would i what i do yep. or could i do um because when you get out of the field it, you you quickly forget how crazy and hectic it is in the field. Um, yes. There's not time for anything. It's retarded. Uh, 
you know, I always said I'd get, I'd go home and when I get, get done with all my service calls, I'd go home and I'd read or watch, you know, some videos on it. Man, that never happened. Yeah. You're just, you're exhausted, but you're burnt. And it'd be the same way on my side too. Um, you know, instead of, I went from being, you know, just kind of physically exhausted from riding around in a car all day to just being mentally exhausted from trying to figure out, you know, how to deal with being, you know, in a completely different environment in my job, completely changing right. all while also trying to be productive. Um, yeah. I mean, you think being in the, being on the sales side or on the distributor side, we could just blast everybody with stuff on their phone, but yeah, they don't operate that way. No. And, and I mean, you can only send, <laughs> not a, and you can only not send retail, so many, I guess yeah, you could say, yeah, you can only send so many emails a week to, you know, newsletters a week or till you just start hounding them that way. And it was, it was interesting, you know, it was not, it's not a, uh, it's not a three month period. I would want to ever deal with again. I know that I was, I yeah. was so ready to get, <laughs> get out of that Sorry. office. Whew. So, so summer hits and it's hot yep. and in the middle of, in the middle of this. Yeah. Um, but when it hit, you would think, I mean, you would almost think that pandemic went away for, oh for yeah, about, no, the beach opened six up six weeks. It went nuts till the, uh, till the 18 wheeler stopped backing up to the, uh, to the dock. Yep. That was, that I thought would never happen awful. ever. I, I never would have thought that too. And I mean, to think, you know, we went from, you know, you go from a standard four week lead time to a six week lead time. So, okay. We reorder for six weeks and then it goes from six weeks to eight weeks, you know, within another two weeks. So, on top of the six weeks you just ordered, we just ordered the next eight. And then it immediately goes to 12 weeks. There was, there was no prep to be covered for that other four to six week gap. There's no way. Right. Um, now I think a lot of the, and I, and I, you know, I heard from different, different people. I mean, you know, the, there's always a buzz going around of what, yeah. what's going on because different manufacturers were struggling. Um, some had COVID go through the plant. Some separated everybody out to the point where they were just not full capacity. Um, and you can't not do that. You can't do that in the summer. No. Um, and then you had some, that, I mean, it just, you know, well, then on top of it, you know, the facts, they, they raised, they raised unemployment, which that also changed, that changed a lot of the way, you know, factory and line workers looked at, you know, their jobs too. Um, oh yeah. I, didn't think I know that. we had, you know, one of our, unemployment one of our was primary, a great gig. yeah, one of our primary uh, manufacturers literally from day to day had no idea what workforce they were going to have that day. They didn't know if they were going to have 88% capacity or 8% capacity. They did not know until the next morning because every single day they would have, you know, more people dropping out because they were trying to file unemployment. Then they would have some people that were, you know, they couldn't get their claims to go through. So they were coming back trying to work. Then you had others right. that they had to, had to turn away that were, went to quarantine. It was, and, and I know it's, I'm sure it's still, in some cases, they're still dealing with the same thing. Maybe not quite as bad as it was at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure if they, I thought they dropped, did they drop that? Did they do away with the? They, they have now. The extra so unemployment money. Yeah. And I think that's why you're starting to see trucks start hitting the dock again. Because <laughs> right. a lot of people have actually started to go back, back to work. Um, but there were multiple big, big manufacturers that had multiple large shutdowns. And that pushed a lot of demand to, to other unitary manufacturers, including ours. Um, and it just saw things go crazy. So I got a kick out of it and I'm not a brand, I'm not a brand guy. I mean, I think you can install them all properly and they do pretty good. Um, but I did get a kick out of the guys that would come in there to buy, you know, collars here and there, 
and you say, hey, man, you know what kind of equipment you put in? Oh, I put this in. Um, you know, it's the best. I, I can't do this. I got to do that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then, there's uh, guys we've been hearing, old, hearing them sing the or something <laughs> else yeah, for two, three years. They ran out of equipment next door, and they come, you know, Hey, can I get a ton? Over. Hey, have you got a you got a seventeen inch, two and a half, three ton coal? Like you can sell me? Uh, nope. So tell me about this. So this is so, and I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how other distributors handle it. I thought it wasn't a bad idea, but um. So, so you think so? You so you put that in perspective, right? This guy comes over. He hasn't bought a thing from us all year. Yep. Except for. a couple collars and some damper motors yep and now he wants equipment because his place ain't got it at all yep um and you know now, and, he, and he looks back at you know yeah i'm sure there are multiple times where myself or even other people on our counter have you know tried to get him to try a piece of our equipment right however um it's not an, it was not a normal time of year for anybody um no we um well we had we have solid you know you got solid customers the customers yep. that i that come to all my training classes and uh you know that you call on every day they're loyal they got to get first dibs on it and you um, have to and it, it started to get a little hairy there <laughs> it did and you know i think i mean it ain't, i don't that. guess we're completely out of the woods but it's no, not bad i think a lot of that comes down to i know we we've, we've alluded to it before we're going to have a a discussion about you know building true distributor partnerships but you know we you know my boss and you know up the ladder had some discussions and then you know um, our regional boss came to us as the sales force in our state and you know we kind of had some discussions and a lot of it was you know we had to we had to rather quickly make a decision um you know, as to what we were going to do. If we, right. if we continued to just sell everything to everybody, as soon as they walked in the door, we were going to be lucky if we could get through two or three weeks and then be sitting potentially for Empty. two months without any product at all. Or we had to, you know, bite the bullet a little bit and look at, you know, guys had, that had bought over a certain threshold from you, you know, not just me, but the other sales sales members or sales team members in the rest of the state and just kind of said this is who you know we're guaranteeing product to for as long as possible um anybody right. you know there may be some outliers on here that you know were starting to buy from us which i had you know i had four or five guys that were really starting to have you know interest in buying from us we had one that had already started really trying to commit to us but we were working on getting the inventory even ordered to handle his business when this stuff hit. So there was, you know, there was multiple guys that I had to tell, you know, that I was not happy to tell that I I couldn't support them right now. It may be three, four months before we could actually really finish taking their business on. And those were not easy conversations. And as a sales guy who's paid on commission, the last thing I want to do is tell people I don't have something to give them. However, what I really don't want to do is go to my top five guys and say, Hey, y'all, I do not have anything because I sold to all these guys that just started buying <laughs> from me. And now right. you're SOL too. It was, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely new for everybody. Um, of course it's still different. You know, it's a little different in the, in the branch still. Um, it is. I've, I have been out on some, uh, you know, job sites now and everybody's got a mask on and you just kind of do your thing. I know we got training starting next week and um, they've asked me to, you know, wear a mask. I'm going to have four guys max on each equipment or on the equipment and uh, for a couple hours at a time. But yeah, I mean, it, it just, even my son said the other day, he's like, man, just walking around the grocery store like you never thought you'd see the united states with everybody with a mask on it just doesn't no No, you you didn't you've seen it on tv and it was always in some other country and it just doesn't look right 
it's just it's strange it's a weird feeling yeah, and you never uh, you never thought you'd see so many things we've seen this year hmm yeah I love all the memes of what the next month's gonna be yeah those are great it's like <laughs> alright September you do this what you got October yep <laughs> oh so, so what? yeah, the, so the summer, yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously. I yeah. felt like we needed a we needed a break in the weather to at least get somewhat caught up. I mean, you hate to slow down, yeah. but well, and that's the headache. We hated to slow down because we never we we hardly even really got out of the starting blocks. You know, we had a right. We kind of sprint through June in the first week of July, and then it was just you know the breaks went on quick. Most of the contractors I talked to, they. You know, they all say they never really slowed down. Like I said, uh, everybody's on lockdown and nobody comes in their house until their AC breaks. Yep. <laughs> or the plumbing. Or the plumbing. Yep. Plumbing will get them too. But, yeah, I mean, I think we got to, I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is the new norm. I think, I think there's going to be a bit of. At least there still is right now. There's a bit of new normal for for salespeople. You know, even though we're we're technically allowed to call on people now, you know, I'm having three or four, maybe five actual face to face booked appointments now. But you know, majority of my appointments, depending on where I'm at, you know, a couple places I got to wear masks. Other places they don't care. Other places, if right. I even brought up a mask, they'd probably want to punch me in the face because I've got. <laughs> That's you know, what I'm have, saying. I've got all different spectrum of. <laughs> you know, mindset with different guys. Um, you know, I haven't, I've only been to one, you know, to one breakfast with a contractor used to, you know, I was at lunches or breakfast or bringing guys food, you know, to job sites or whatever. Right. I think this is probably, um, you know, this is the least I've probably ever used, um, a company card or allowance because there's really just nothing. <laughs> I can go do stuff with guys right now. Um, it's just, it, it, it's different and, you know, I think on their side too, I think a lot of contractors got used to not quite having to deal with, with salespeople quite as much. So there's right. some that I think embrace their, you know, their newfound independence a little bit. And there's others that are, you know, even more needy than they were before because they're just, you know, they're not used to doing things differently either because they just get set in their ways and you know some of them i'll admit it there's some guys i spoil just because i like them and i really want to help them grow their business so sometimes i do a little bit more for them than i probably should but i just don't know right i don't know how to not be that person i want to see them succeed it makes me feel good that i was part of their success well you talk about you talk about the sales guy so we had a vendor come in today we're all eating lunch i, I can't remember what he sells um Man, I can't remember what he sells, but you can tell me the name. He come, need to bleep it out, and I could probably tell you. Know, I can't. <laughs> he come in there, and everybody just grabs their phone. A couple of us put it to our ear. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had a call, and it's ah, man, it'd be tough being the sales guy. I'm sure you get used to it, but yeah, it's everybody it's just kind of dips out. Like now, nah, I'm not talking to this guy. Um. I mean, super nice guy, but, um, you know, he's a sales guy. Well, he's, a lot of times for, but he's got to do, rep, he's got to do yeah. that. That's his job. Yeah. Man. A lot of times for vendor reps, it's almost a little bit different because they're half the time when, you know, when a vendor rep comes in, you know, let's say, you know, let's say a vendor rep comes in and he's talking with me, you know, he's, there's really not a lot he can sell me on technically. Because in most cases, I'm already buying, you know, multiple things that are from his product line if he's coming to see me. Right. The, the biggest thing there is he's just, you know, how can he help me sell to other people? But when I can't really go see a lot of these other people, it gets harder to go put new things in their hands at the time, at the moment. Now, we sold some, uh, I would imagine the UV light went up. Oh, yeah. The sales went up on that. And the, uh, the yeah. UV lights and... Uh, negative ion generation 
uh, photocatalytic stuff, all that went through the roof. Yeah. Um, you know, their lead times initially went crazy too. Um, some of them have kind of gotten back to normal, but there's still some that it's just, it's crazy trying to get things. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I guess we'll see next week. I, I think that, I think on my end, on the training end, um, some of the stuff that I've changed to compensate, I think we'll stay with it. I think we're going to like it. I, I agree too. Um, I think this is actually, in, in a lot of cases, I think this is, this has forced some very creative ingenuity. Oh yeah. In different sure. things. So I think in the long run, I believe there's a good chance that this stuff made our business and our company stronger in a lot of places I think it exposed some weaknesses and some others that you know it's allowed us to to kind of focus to try to work on you know I hope it did that for everybody hopefully we adjust to it and do better than our competition so we can try to stay on top <laughs> but you know it's it's interesting to see you know what's going to come you know as we end third quarter which we will here in a few days and go into Q4 because once again, we're kind of in that mild weather again. Um, so now it's yeah, kind of, well, when's yeah. it going to really break and we start running towards winter weather? Well, and another thing that I'm kind of glad that we opened back up, um, the pranks in the branch with no contractors in there was getting, it's getting a little out of hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Zach. <laughs> Gosh, Zach, Zach oh, we got him it. like 12 times today. Ah, I wasn't there all day. I was getting my butt whooped by angry contractors so, all day. <laughs> little backstory on Zach. Um, he kind of zones out quickly. Um, or, or, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Like if he's working on something, he gets into it and everything else around him is just silence. Yep. He can focus on something no matter what's going on. Which means that you can scare him literally every five minutes. <laughs> like fresh. <laughs> He's just, like out of his skin. <laughs> oh man. Uh the fire cra yeah. The I gotta I gotta put some audio on here. Um when Travis cut the lights off in the bathroom and threw a firecracker in there while Zach's on the toilet. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> that is classic. Especially you can hear you, his belt jingling. Can, like yeah. he's trying to make a move. <laughs> so wrong. Oh man. I still love, I still love the, uh, the air horn peeping out of the office right behind his head. That was great. Yeah, so Zach was, so we got, the, the whole video is, it's kind of long, but Zach's the only one at the counter, and he's on the computer, he's typing up something, and then he gets his phone out, and he kind of gives the look around like, nobody's going to see me on my phone. So he's on his phone, and he just gets locked in on something. And uh, one of the ladies that works in the office, she comes walking by, and he puts his phone up, he acts like he's back on the computer. <laughs> and then when she leaves, he's back on his phone. And I let him get good and just sunk into that thing. And I hit, the, hit him with the air horn. Oh, man. <laughs> he he about went through the counter. Oh, yeah. He's... <laughs> Sling the phone in the air. Oh, man. And, and he's like, please, every time we scare him, he's like, please tell me you were videoing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we got it. You don't worry, Zach. We got it. <laughs> don't worry. You can relive all of your shame over and over again for our entertainment. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to bring we'll have, Zach's going to be a regular on here. We we'll have to bring him on here, and we'll have to bring him back and really dig into the pranks. I know we we got into a little bit of it on the training stuff, but we really wanted to dig, kind of dig deep into. Into his oh, backstory we can, we can too. Have a whole get episode. you guys introduced to him. Yeah, in a lot of ways. 
Yeah, Zach's he's had a fun little, you know, I, everybody that I'm around now has had a pretty interesting uh, upbringing in the in the HVAC world, um, and I think that's what makes it cool. Here, everybody's uh, how they got into it, and you know, because it is a uh, it can be a beast of an industry. Um, it's a it's a license to print money, yet it's um it can be harsh on you too yep i mean the stuff in the field you know the family the the stress it's it's pretty it's a good trade though it's still hanging tough oh, i just heard my unit cut on out there love that i still can't believe how loud mine was yesterday when we were talking i'm three i'm three stories up in an apartment window shut and you could hear that freaking thing bang on out there <laughs> and then then i heard the air handler kick in and say like, oh that one was mine <laughs> yep yep all right so you got anything else on the pandemic except for uh hopefully it's gonna end uh, soon i'm hoping hoping uh things will end soon uh going into q4 and you know, hopefully things will continue. We've had had a lot of boxes hit the hit the dock the last week, so I'm hoping things are really going to start cranking back up, and maybe we'll pick up a few few that we had to turn away before this, you know, before the year ends, and right. Bring on 2021. Let's see what you mm. got for us next. No, I know, right. <laughs> God, I graduated high school in 2000. I can't believe we're already 2021. Isn't there supposed to be like flying cars and stuff now? I mean, what? I mean, if you look back at all the movies that came out in the 70s and 80s, you would think we would be much more advanced than we are now. Yeah, what's the magazine? Um, technology magazine? What is it? Uh, the- there's one I thought was like modern science or something. Yeah, that modern, uh, is it modern science? Yeah, I mean, my dad said he was reading those as a kid, and he's like, "Year 2000, it was going to be like the Jetsons. Just we're going to be cruising around everywhere." Yep. Uh, so far, I think they're just using Vaseline on the camera to hide the wheels on their speeder, like they did in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right so thanks for yo do what i said yeah that 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 car floats we're good yeah <laughs> who needs tires so we were we were well, speaking of that we can go down that rat hole um <laughs> me and the, me and my kids were driving the other day and they're like when are we gonna do the, when are we gonna have flying cars and i'm like just look on the highway right now at all the cars around us and picture them all up in the air with no structure to guide them. Yeah. My 15 year old's like, yeah, that's, that's, that wouldn't be a good idea. I'm no. like, no, no, that's not a good idea. You tell me how that's going to work. No, it's of course, not. Of course, my daughter's like, it's fine. You could just land right there at the Burger King and then take back off. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm in. Good. And then what was what is the next line that she said? I don't know. Hi, COVID. Hi, COVID. Yep. <laughs> She's a podcaster. Ha, COVID. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna crop that in there. You should, especially on this episode. Definitely. Ha, COVID. All right. Thanks everybody for listening. We have run out of stuff to talk about trying to think of what we want to get into next yeah what do you think uh, we uh we're hoping rub our fingers together in excitement uh we're hoping that we're gonna have a an inside a little bit of an industry insider with a manufacturer's rep friend of ours and possibly in the next episode maybe in the one afterwards we're um we're not gonna bring names into it you know we're gonna keep him anonymous um yeah, we appreciate yeah, he's him. gonna he's gonna run it up the legal ladder and see if they'll yeah. let him. Yeah, make sure everything's um, okay. But we're we're excited. I think it'd be a really fun episode for everybody. 
yeah, good dude. Very knowledgeable. Kind of, I'd like to, you know, see see some of his what he thinks about certain things on that side of the industry. So, different perspective than a lot of a lot of guys get to hear. Oh yeah, yep. So yeah, all right. Look forward to it, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Yep. See y'all next time.